Genshin's version 1 units have been fighting an uphill battle to stay relevant in the meta and will continue to so long as there's no telltale sign of balance adjustments being retroactively given to characters. The only ones that managed to withstand the test of time were those who were so broken that even if they came out today in version 4, players would go nuts about them. Which just goes to show you how ridiculous they were back in the first year of the game when they're still strong even now. Pretty much the only ones that consistently survived to this day were supports or sub DPSs, whose lenient field time made them less likely to be superseded by anyone through direct competition. Main damage dealers in particular bore the brunt of H, with once high performers like Diluc, Sol, Ganyu, Yula, Racer, Kutsin, Klee, and Hu Tao diminishing in market share due to Ayaka, Ayato, Shogun, Alhaitham, Yoemiya, and Nahida entering discussion. Though some of them held fast thanks to coincidental indirect buffs such as Hu Tao receiving Yelan, Sol getting Farazan, and Kutsin getting Dendro, with those occurrences being based around external factors, it's safe to assume version 1's main DPS units would be in a far worse position if they didn't get them. That is, except for one. For years, Child has been a more low-key 5-star from version 1 and the only playable representative of Stanchnaya during that entire time, and while he's never been the most popular character out there, evidenced by the lack of widespread commercial success whenever his banners come out, he's proven to be arguably the most enduring 5-star on-field damage dealer in the entire game, more than anyone else in relation to how long he's been out for. I just thought off of making a video on him mostly because he was stuck in a limbo between not being a why everyone plays, but also not a why no one plays. So for the next episode of What Happened To, let's go through Child's history and break down exactly how he survived and continues to thrive all this time. Introduced way back in version 1.1, Tartalia, known more by his codename Child, was the second feature 5-star on-field damage dealer in the game after Klee, and the first Hydra main DPS too, since all version 1 Hydra units consisted entirely of supports or off-fielders. While he did play a major role in the Liyue Archon questline, his commercial reception was comparatively mild to the banners that came before, performing measurably worse than Venti and Klee. Yet at the same time, the general consensus back then was that he was a serviceably good unit, having solid front-loaded and persistent damage that wasn't too far off from the gold standard. The potential of his effective output had yet to be discovered though, it wouldn't be fully explored until version 2. Throughout the first year, the primary goal of most players was to build their roster of units, getting their feet off the ground with a good team of supports and damage dealers to take on whatever Genshin had to offer. Venti and Klee's commercial success had more to do with new release hype than their actual viability. Child was the first banner to come off of that new game hype, yet players were still far from understanding and solving the game's mechanics. All they really went off of was how much they liked or didn't like the character. Now, over in Asia, Child's the belle of the ball, so to speak. People over there love him. Over in the West, not as much. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of Child fans, but all eyes were on Zhongli, Shao, Ganyu, Hu Tao, etc., which is why even though he and Venti were the first units to get a rerun, there wasn't as much of a reason for people to get him, seeing as he lacked the same character appeal as the other version 1 units, and around that point, everyone more or less had a couple main DPS units geared up already. The main team that players went with for him during this time was dubbed Fireworks, entailing himself, Fischl, Beidol, and one other character, usually Bennett or Venti, although this wasn't to be confused with Taser, as it had more to do with the raw damage output of each individual unit, given that this team was played around with before the buff to transformative reactions at 1.6. So while the community was more or less aware of its existence, the fireworks comp stayed a niche team strategy up until its unofficial retirement. They also played with Child, Shangling, Bennett, and Sucrose, but it wasn't all that effective initially. That team wouldn't reach its full potential until Kasuha came out, though if you remember, Kasuha's first banner sales were awful. His maiden voyage was the biggest regret of anyone who skipped him, proven by his rerun alongside Klee pulling 2.5 times the revenue, and I know for a fact, 99% of those sales were from him. To repeat, it's not that people thought he was a bad character, everyone considered him pretty good, but there was an overall lack of understanding of his team and his kit among those who didn't go the extra mile to figure it out, in addition to not having the right resources and equipment yet. So he never really gathered a lot of exposure to catalyze that insight, both because of the fact that he wasn't part of Liyue's overarching mythos beyond trying to sink it underwater and bad timing, so further interest in him didn't come out until the tail end of version 1 going into version 2. First and foremost, Child's character package, if we want to call it that, was incomplete. His signature weapon, the Polar Star, was not made available until his third event banner in version 2.2. It was around that time where his development started to gain momentum, giving rise to the Child's international team with the advent of Inazuma. Early iterations of the national team, that being Chongyun or Sugros, Shangling, Xingqiu, and Bennett, split off into alternate versions based on a specific character. The most noteworthy, of course, being the Raiden national team, replacing Chongyun with Shogun to augment the entire team's output. While this team received more widespread attention, there was another team that received less, albeit still a fair amount, the Child International Team. Reasoning behind calling it International instead of National was out of consideration for the party featuring characters all from a different region, Child from Sneshnaya, Kasaha from Inazuma, Shangling from Liyue, and Bennett from Mondstadt. Ignoring the naming convention, Sukos was a viable swap out for those who didn't have Kasaha, at the expense of compromising in poise. 
Taking advantage of the sheer buffing capabilities of Bennett and Kasahod, the international team would greatly enhance Shangling's Pyronado through Snapshot before swapping to Child and having him go to town on everyone with Vaporize. Technically, you wanted to achieve Reverse Vaporize more than Forward to make the most out of Shangling, which makes her the actual carry of international, but Child's own damage output was not something to ignore by any means. Besides, through both their generous area coverages, they made for a very consistent team in virtually every situation conceivable, bosses or groups of enemies. Some argued it was even stronger than Raiden National on a few counts. Adding in either Kasaha or Sucrose gave the team a modicum of crowd control, something the Raiden National team struggled with due to overload explosions knocking enemies away. Child's area coverage also made applying Hydro to clusters of enemies more consistent than Xingzhou, who only really excelled at single target application. And even then, Vaporize was more of a byproduct than Raiden National, with the strength of that team coming from the raw damage output of Shogun and the elemental burst damage buff she gave to the entire team. Whereas the National also had a ton of base damage, but in conjunction with Vaporize, which was at that point in time still going strong as the best reaction in the game. Remember, we're still talking version 2, pre-Dendro. Additionally, while the overall investment floor for this team was pretty lax, reaching the max damage ceiling on International was more taxing on one's understanding of rotations and cooldowns, as opposed to the Raiden National team which was, for the most part, face rolling on the keyboard. In essence, the strengths of Child and his team weren't apparent right from the get-go. To be frank, they still aren't. Unlike Taser, Freeze, other versions of National, and even the Dendro comps that arrived the following year, comfort wasn't a priority for International. What caused it to get overshadowed in popularity was, once again, the fact that Child was, and still is, a far less beloved unit than Shogun, whom everyone wanted, which, can I interject for a moment? Child was a piece of sh**, I think we can all agree on that. But Shogun was also a piece of sh**, arguably a bigger piece of sh** than Child was, and for much longer. So why in hell does the community unanimously love the unemployed Neek shut-in over the Rissler who's good with kids and rich? Anime titties, I swear, they could cure cancer if they were real. Nevertheless, the effectiveness of International could not be disputed, although it wasn't just him. The team as a whole got much stronger, Kasaha being a stronger animal option than Sucrose, Bennett being as good as always, Shangling obtaining access to Emblem of Sever Fate along with the Catch, or Engulfing Lightning for Whales, and of course, Child finally getting his personal weapon, the Polar Star. The team was complete, and it stayed competitive even in spite of the expanding list of team compositions and new units. Said new units would ironically be the next thing that put him on the board, for the entirety of version 1 and early version 2, the Hydro roster consisted solely of Barba, Shinto, Mona, Kokomi, and him. That was it. With the element having a very supportive motif around it, Child's divergent playstyle made him a rogue strategy. Coupled with Kokomi's initial reception being really bad, and Hydro as a whole was in dire need of spotlight. When Ayato first came out, everyone was hasty to compare the two against each other, since they were both main DPS Hydro units. With the burning question in everyone's minds, players wasted no time running numbers on him and his team, finally giving him the mainstream attention which in turn gave him the chance to show everyone that he was in fact really damn good. Obviously we know Hydro has hands down the best element in the game today, but not too long ago it was the least developed element of the 7. Not that it was bad, it just had the smallest roster. It wasn't until Ayato and Yelan's back-to-back -back release when Hydro started to climb up the hierarchy. So you can think of it, almost like a chain reaction of events to a version 2 that snowballed into a massive globe for a child. Entering version 3, Dendro and its accompanying reactions occupied center stage for the remainder of 2022, showcasing the immense quality of life buffs to Electro and further strengthening Hydro's already impressive repertoire of reactions. Though power creep isn't as pressing of a concern in Genshin, there was an observable increase in power and or capabilities for version 3 units, seeing as how we received 3 tier 0 units in quick succession. Overnight, Bloom and Quicken took over as two of the best offensive reactions in the game, raising the bar on what players believed to be good as there was a new standard to compare existing strategies to. With how none of Child's teams made use of either of them, as the only Dendro-related team he had was Burgeon, his least commonly used team, one would assume his newfound exposure would be short-lived, outclassed by teams born from the new reactions, but not so actually. There was one less noticeable thing that indirectly played a role in players gaining more appreciation for his team, Spiral Abyss. I didn't touch on this in version 2, but Spiral Abyss has been getting progressively more and more difficult beginning in the second year of Genshin's timeline, underscoring the need for team building and planning since gone are the days where you could unga boonga your way through floors 11 and 12 and get 36 stars without even trying, unless you're a whale. If you wanted to 36 star clear Spiral Abyss in one attempt, that is, going through all chambers with just one team for each side, you were severely restricted in the number of teams you could go for. I understand that we're entering the realm of sweaty MLG tryhard gamer and not the average player, but bear with me, this is important to his character arc. In other words, you had to construct a team with very high consistent damage and uptime, survivability, area coverage, and crowd control. With Genshin entering year 3 of service, most players had the fleshed out selection of characters to construct a team with. But, with the growing difficulty and restrictions imposed by the game's new enemies, building two parties that could handle both sides of all three chambers proved to be more of a challenge than anticipated. Almost every high-profile team specialized in one field at the cost of another. International, however, did everything. Chao and Shangling's wide area coverage in tandem with fantastic application ensured you could wipe the floor with... 
the floor's enemies in record time. While Kasuha or Suko swapped out in drawing strikers together and empowering damage, and Bennett keeping everyone alive and making them stronger. Though most of their pressure came in the form of Hydro and Pyro damage, it was sufficient enough to brute force their way through any assortment of mobs, with the exception of Hydro immune targets like the Abyss Herald. His team was perfect for handling the large majority of Spiral Abyss iterations of version 3, not only for its extensive coverage, but also because being uninvolved with Dendro whatsoever actually worked to its benefit. The core of International is Child, Changling, and Bennett with a flex 4 slot, usually reaction support. The three main units are not required for any Quicken or Hyper Bloom based team, nor are they needed for other top performing parties, including but not limited to Freeze, Double Hydro, and Taser. A crucial benefit that comes with using Child is that he affords you the luxury of Hydro application on your main carry. What makes Hydro so valuable is that it's essential for almost any team to function correctly, consequently resulting in Xingqiu, Yelan, and Kokomi to be extremely high demand units, amplified even further when Bloom teams became commonplace. Heaven knows how many times I wish I had two Xingqiu's. Thing is, Child kind of is a second Xingqiu in a way, or rather he could do everything you need a Xingqiu to do, freeing him and by extension the other Hydro units for whatever you wanted to do for the second team of Spiral Abyss, all while not overlapping in character necessity. Child International was so team agnostic that you could do International plus Ayaka Freeze, International plus I'll Hate Them Hyper Bloom, International plus Nilo Bloom, International plus Facial Aggravate, International plus Double Hydro, International plus anything. Budgeting your Hydro characters was a serious pain point for players throughout version 3, even those who had all the premier ones, Kokomi, Xingqiu, and Yela, since there was always a need for Hydro. Child was a viable and more importantly, convenient answer to that by being both a DPS and Hydro applicator. Meanwhile, the decreased market share of Pyro characters like Bennett and Shangling meant they could also go into him and still make for a very strong team. That's why he consistently saw play in every iteration of Abyss. Not a huge amount, mind you, but 25-35% to is definitely a sizable figure, especially considering he gets around that amount in almost every single Spiral Abyss in version 3. A testament to how consistent and versatile the team is. There doesn't appear to be any signs of him falling off either, which I find really impressive given that he came out way back in version 1.1. Child was a slow burn late bloomer type character, definitely a victim of poor timing and circumstance, not having the right units, equipment, and understanding to unlock his full potential. Moreover, his playstyle diverged from the archetypal theme of Hydro, kind of like how Toma's playstyle goes against the main idea of Pyro characters. So for a long time, players were not only missing some pieces to the puzzle, but when they finally got the remaining pieces, they didn't bother to go back and finish things. Exacerbating his inability to draw player attention despite being the first unit to have a third rerun was that there was always a new challenger hogging the spotlight. He was always good, it just took a long time for players to notice it. His team has not changed in over two years, yet it still competes with all the others. Obviously, Shangling, Bennett, and Kasuha deserve just as much credit for that, being three of the best students of all time and whatnot. But while he may not fit the textbook definition of Hydro's expectations, just like any other Hydro unit, Child is the one keeping his team alive. Niche, but reliable and consistent. Something I find funny is that his gameplay timeline is conveniently reminiscent of his narrative timeline. Since we met him in Liyue, he just randomly pops out out of nowhere with the Hey, remember me? I'm still here kind of vibe. Once back in Labyrinth Warriors and then again in version 4, he's like that ex-boyfriend you thought you moved on from but he keeps showing up to remind you of him, which I think is very appropriate given the incessant child Lumine shipping running rampant throughout the community. His gameplay reflects that. No matter how much you get distracted by the newfangled toys, in the end, you come crawling right back to him. Truly, the most enduring character in all of Genshin Impact. I hope you guys enjoyed this What Happened to episode, I had a great time making it, and it actually made me want to dust him off since I haven't played him in a while. Those of you who followed me way back in 2021 might recall a lot of background footage of me using Child. I for one enjoy his playstyle a ton, even in spite of that cumbersome elemental skill cooldown. Perhaps this video inspired you to try him out as well. In any case, if you liked the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up and sub to the channel, really helps me out. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Varsvarm, join my Discord server, and check out my other What Happened To episodes if you haven't yet. But for now, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.